the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you. And, with your spirit. and welcome everyone to this, the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And as we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's just stop and call to mind our sin and ask the Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together we cry out. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good We pray. Let us pray. O God, who through grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright true light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, as Elisha was on his way to Shunem, a woman of rank who lived there pressed him to stay and eat there. After this, he always broke his journey for a meal when he passed that way. She said to her husband, Look, I am sure the man who is constantly passing our way must be a holy man of God. Let us build him a small room on the roof and put him in a bed in it and a table and a chair and lamp. Whenever he comes to us, he can rest there. One day when he came, he retired to the upper room to lay down. What can be done for her, he asked. Gehazi, his servant, answered. Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. Elisha said, call her. The servant called her, and she stood at the door. This time next year, 
Alicia said, you will hold a son in your arms. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all to sin, so his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God who call you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows. Anyone who prefers father or mother 
to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not take up their cross and follow in my footsteps is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds their life will lose it, and anyone who loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and those who welcome me welcome the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet because they are a prophet will have a prophet's reward. And anyone who welcomes a holy man because he is a holy man will have a holy man's reward. If anyone gives so much as a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because they are a disciple, then I, will, I, then I tell you solemnly, they will most certainly not lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel tells us of what it was like for the Matthean community, the community of Matthew, having made the decision to follow a different way, to step aside from the practices of faith that they had participated in and to follow in the way and the teachings of Christ. In this community now, family, relationships and friendships were put under tremendous strain. They were seen as traitors to their Jewish heritage. They became open to ritual, to ridicule, and there was a cost that they had to pay. In the musical of Fiddler on the Roof, there is one particular scene where the father disowns his daughter. His daughter marries someone outside the bounds of the Jewish faith. As a reaction, he tears his shirt as a sign that she no longer is alive to him. That's a very radical step. But it's also the same situation that the Matthean community would have had in their time as these family relationships broke down. It was only over time that any form of relationship could begin to develop again. But I ask a very simple question, how different is it now? Matthew speaks in very stark terms. And he speaks so about the cost of siding with Jesus. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. It is one thing to deal with family division and conflict, but it's a completely different thing to wrestle with the inner conflict that comes from as someone struggles to understand the vision of Jesus and his values in real life situations. Living that vision and those values in all manner of work and social situations will always lead to interpersonal tensions and disagreements. For many, it was seen as the wrong way to go. And for many, it was simple as black and white. Recently, a friend of mine was asked to go and speak to a group of primary school children about Judaism. That's before lockdown happened. At one point, he wrote on the board a word in Hebrew. After explaining the word's meaning, he asked the students if they noticed anything about how he had written the word. One of the students said that it was written the wrong way. What that student had picked up on was the fact, of course, that it was written, the word was written right to left rather than left to right. For that student and for most of us, the correct way of writing is from left to right. Therefore, we are conditioned to think 
that to write right to left is wrong. What that student illustrated was that for most people, what is a right way of doing something and a wrong way of doing something? Things are either black or white. The reality is, however, that there are shades of grey. There are multiplicities of ways in which many things may be done. And most of us are conditioned to think in absolutes. The truth is that different ways are not wrong or not right. They are just different. The fact that we might know this does not necessarily mean that we are always applying this kind of thinking. Our conditioning is that we see things in black and white. This thinking becomes an issue in many aspects of our lives and none more so than in the reading and the application of the scriptures. Today's gospel is a classic case in point. What do we hear? Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. These words have been used to, to tremendous harm throughout the centuries. Guilt has been placed on both children and parents because they have been told that their love for each other has been to the exclusion of Christ and therefore of God. Or worse still, they have treated children or parents as second rate and deprived them of love and care because it might mean that they have insufficient love for God. The problem has been, as so often in our reading of the scriptures, we have to read into the text what is not there in the first place. The text does not say that we do not, that we do not love father, mother, son or daughter. It simply says that we are not to love them beyond how we love Jesus and therefore God. Countless texts tell us in one form or another that we are to love God as we love our neighbour. And who is more neighbour than our family? Jesus today speaks of the centrality of family. He wants the wants of any person or any group of people, for example a family, cannot be met by trampling on or denying the rights and the needs of others. If people in my family were to act in such a way, I would in conscience have to separate myself from such behaviour. And I would do this precisely because I love my family. I simply cannot join them in behaviour which I know to be unjust and evil and self-centred. I could not condone immoral practices becoming rich by fraud or criminal practices on the part of one or another within my family. The form of the words may change, but the essence is always the same. The love of God will always be most fully expressed in the way we love each other. The love of God will always be most fully expressed in how we care for each other. As the first letter of St John's tells us, how can we say we love the God we cannot see when we do not love the brother or sister we can see? When we come to the celebration of Eucharist, as often as we like, but if it's not an expression of of being a member of a community, of loving brother and sister, mother and father, and what all those relationships mean, then our celebration can become simply an empty gesture. The love of God can only be expressed in the expression of love of each other. This love does not deny difference and even the need for challenge and correction. It is not the so-called love so often portrayed on screen or in song. 
It is a love that calls for the challenge of the cross, a challenge to sacrifice, and a challenge of contradiction, a challenge that says that not all is right with the world. Love of father, of mother, of daughter, of brother, or sister, or son, does not diminish love of Christ, but calls us to a fuller participation in the love of God. It is a love that calls us to challenge ourselves and to challenge those to whom we give it. The, the whole world, just as the love of the Father shown through the Son, challenges us to see beyond the experiences of what we see as simplistic answers to the real complexity of love. We are called not to, not to the either or, or but, but to the both and. Love of God expressed through love of all we see, all those we encounter and all those who ask to respond to them. This is the love that you and I are called to reveal. This is the love that you and I are called to live because this is the love that Jesus revealed. And as the body of Christ, we are called to love the way he loved. So we pray our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Son of God, before, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ took up his cross for our sake. Let us bear the burdens of those in need and bring our prayer before the God of all. That the church may be made worthy of Christ through its ministry to those in need. In your goodness. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who seek refuge from hostile and unjust regimes will find refuge and security. In your goodness. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are alone or live in despair will be met with friendship and hospitality. In your goodness. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who yearn for children will find strength in Christ's unceasing love. In your goodness. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who work in dangerous occupations, those who care for the sick, especially in this continued time of the pandemic, will be strengthened to continue to reveal Christ's unceasing healing love. In your goodness. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community be known by its eagerness to welcome, diligence in prayer, and generous in outreach and concern for others. In your goodness. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will reach their eternal reward 
including those mentioned in our parish bulletins and all those who have died as a result of COVID-19. In your goodness. Lord, hear our prayer. Faithful and loving God, you have entrusted to us a share in the mission of Christ your Son. Hear our prayers and help us to follow the path of sacrifice and service until we reach our promised reward. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of your own for our good and for all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of, those, of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. All the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. 
and the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's now greet each other with peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks for being with us, everyone, and God bless.